Today I'm going to make a poor man's power limiter um, with a handy box. I happen to have a three-quarter handy box. Some non-metallic cable clamps, just need two. Regular wall outlet in the single gang box there, and then a outlet cover. So what we're going to do, we're going to break the tabs off each side of the outlet. If you're not from North America land, Freedom World, and you're not used to this, what these tabs will do if I bust these off is it's for making it a switched outlet so it isolates the top and the bottom circuit instead of having a pass through. So by doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it where power feeds through one outlet before going down to the next and basically connect the outlets in a series, which sounds silly, but you want to do this for testing things at lower current if you don't have a Variac or something like that. So I can plug in a lamp or a space heater and arbitrarily control how much current can go through um, with a secondary device. So let me go ahead and get started on that and I'll come back in just a bit. I forgot, you also want a ground screw, short piece of bare 12 gauge wire and a wire nut. We're gonna make sure to ground the box too. <clears throat> All right, so out of the neutral on the top into the load side on bottom. The top side will be where our, our load will be connected for ballasting. Uh, you do not use the do not use the stab ends. Don't be a tool. Just wrap around the direction of the screw turning when tightening, so that when the screw is tightened, it will pull the lead in. There's a little bit too much strip there, but you know what? This isn't going in a house. I don't care. So uh, this is how it should look, though. That side is better. That's how it should look. Next, to make sure the ground lead or a ground lead is firmly attached on the outlet, again with the tightening direction of the screw firmly underneath your ground screw, and then a ground screw installed in the box with a little dangly bit. Using a handy box this small, I always recommend using the bottom and the top um, conductor outlet holes, so we're not using it as a junction, so we just pop top, pop the bottom. Um, I take a bolt or some random screw or nail and use that. Don't, don't use your screwdriver tip to pop the knockouts. Don't, don't do that. And once you get them this far in, just take your trusty clines and uh, reach in here, and you can bendle back and forth, they'll come right out. Next, we're going to install the non-metallic cable clamps, one on top, one on bottom. Um, we'll attach them facing like this. And the way you'll do that is you'll screw them down and then you'll use a flathead screwdriver and a hammer and beat these down and make sure these are good and tight inside the uh, handy box there. Voila, your cable clamps installed on each side, your run cables in there, and now we're going to connect our ground. For a secure connection, you never just take two wires and place them under the wire nut. I will take the lineman's pliers, and if you don't have some, you need to buy them. These are lineman's pliers. You will twist the leads. You do not need to twist them like three inches. Just twist enough that there's surface area connecting between them. Otherwise, you'll be relying on the surface area aluminum conductor inside of this, in the ground fault condition, and you don't want to do that. Copper to copper is your friend, so use your lineman's twist and we'll continue. And now that we've twisted the conductors, they're not going anywhere. They are very tight. Okay, then we attach the wire nut to the top. And if you're fancy, you might have a ground wire nut, which I don't have any in the shelf, with a hole in the top, so you don't have to do this whole mess. It's much easier to do that, because then you can just have that and lead coming in. Oh, <laughs> dork. <laughs> I'm gonna need to have my power coming in and actually connect the ground to the ground lead before I put the wire nut on, but yes, so we'll get to that. The trick with these computer power cables is to score the conductor on the outside by just kind of chomping it with your dikes. And then you can usually push down on the side like this and it will split on its own. You can kind of see it right now. It's usually a much easier way to extract these. Let me try this real quick. If you're in the UK or Australia, I think you have different colors, but here in the States, um, line is black, neutral is white, ground is green. Um, we're going to go ahead and push those through. I think in the I think the British folks have brown, which concerns me greatly. Um, <laughs> not used to that at all. So I'm going to shove this through the non-metallic lead coming in the top, uh, which will be over here. And then we're going to connect our grounds together and put the wire nut on. I'm realizing in my ADD squirrel mode that I didn't tell you that the the top non-metallic conductor is actually optional. Um, and I came in through the bottom, because why not? Um, point being, though, uh, this is all tied up now. So you come in hot comes in from my 16 gauge cheap little power cord top here and then the neutral passes down to the hot over here then the neutral goes out here back to the outlet so now you have this series connected so whatever you plug in here will be in series with the load here 
Um, we're going to put all this back in the box after we put some tape around it and then close her back up. Oh, also because this is in a handy box, we will break off uh, these ears. See where you've got the crease mark? You'll just take your linemans and you'll bend those back and forth until those snap off. There it is, wrapped in electrical tape. And uh, when you finish your tape, don't, don't rip the tape. Just cut it. Because what will happen is if you rip it, over time, the tape will kind of shrink back up and it'll knock itself loose. So if you want your electrical tape to stay nice and tight, just clip with scissors or use your dikes, just cut it, and then it'll be good. We're going to screw this down in the box and put the face on. I also forgot to mention it. It's anything you take for granted, but you need to take your alignments and snip the 30-second screw because it will run into the uh, NM connector since you're using the top and bottom. In your case, just the bottom because you don't need the top because that's for me for future use later with this little project. All right, so now I'm going to show you how this works. Let's go ahead and plug this guy in right here. Okay, there's our handy little box. And we're going to connect our top, which is a light. Turn it on, nothing happens. Let's go grab something to plug in. Well, obviously there's no way a 16 gauge lead should run a space heater, but we're going to run everything through a 65 watt light bulb. Turn off Mr. Space Heater, plug this in the bottom. So remember, everything that's going to go through has to pass through the light bulb first and then to Mr. Space Heater. So like I put it on 1500 watt, the bulb is lit. 1300 watt, or 1300 watt, and it's able to run the fan, but there's not any actual heat coming out. The light is very dim. Oh, that's just the fan. I forget there's a fan setting. That's why the fan is running. Uh, so the minute I put it to 1300, boof. It just, it can only pull 65 watt. It's not even enough to run the little split pole motor in there. So this is very useful for things like um, microwave oven transformers. So if you're doing any projects with microwave oven transformers, which are not current limited, earlier I showed some videos with neon sign transformers, and those are current limited. This is an old technique. I don't know that I've seen any videos on this. I actually didn't even search. Maybe, maybe somebody made one. But um, So basically what you did, though, is we took these metal tabs off on the outlet, right? Uh, and we turned it into a switched outlet. So this outlet is isolated from this one. And what we did is we have a line. Turn that up. We have the line coming in. So power comes in on this side. goes through Mr. Lightbulb, goes out, and then goes into Mr. Space Heater, and then goes out through our cord. Because of that, and I have a 16 gauge lead, it can never pass over 65 watts. 65 watts is our current for the bulb. That's what can the maximum that can go through the circuit. So the fan obviously pulls less than that. So as long as your load is below 65 watts, this will work. Works really well though. Like I said, uh, non-current limited things like microwave oven transformers, this allows you to prevent them from just pulling a full 20 amps. Um, and that's what I had the second output for, was for a microwave oven transformer to be hardwired in with some THHN um, out of the single box and then mounted on a thing. But uh, I wanted to have this for reading voltage easily, uh, where I have the space heater plugged in. So this, this whole thing is me being lazy. But I figured somebody would like to see this go, because this is a cool way to limit current. Uh, it's a nice little grounded, happy current limiting box. You can also use this for testing antique radios and televisions. So if you're working on um, hot chassis radios or anything like that, and you're worried there may be a dead short because the equipment's not been powered on in years, again, you can use the same mechanism. So put a light bulb in series, and right now it'll be getting warm, but it's not even illuminating because it's running that fan. Um, but once you pull 65 watts or more, it can't pull any more than 65 watts, and it's just going to set here. So if you don't have a Variac, you don't have anything fancy, this is a real cool way to limit current, uh, not just for... Uh, microwave oven transformers and high voltage stuff, but also for testing old hot chassis radios and stuff like that. So, there you go. Poor man's junction box current limiter thing. Have fun.